Mr. Sandman. Lulu and Lou are having a slumber party. Today they're allowed to sleep over together. That's fun, but it is a bit difficult to fall asleep, since it's so delightful there together. Hey, Lulu, can you get to sleep? Whispers Lou when it's gotten quiet for a moment, as they both lie cozily under their covers, with just a small nightlight on in the room. No, Lou, actually I can't, says Lulu. I just don't seem to get tired. Hmm, says Lou. Maybe you can tell a story the way Mom does. Yeah, we can do that. Tell stories. I know one about Mr. Sandman. That one will definitely help us get to sleep. Ooh, that sounds good. Who's Mr. Sandman? Does he live at the beach? I'll tell you about him. Mr. Sandman, who's sometimes simply called the Sandman, got his name because he sprinkles sand in people's eyes. Oh! exclaims Lou with a painful look on his face. No, Lou, it doesn't hurt. It is, after all, magical sand that helps people fall asleep. It makes you drowsy, nice and slowly drifting off. Hmm. The story goes like this. There was once an old man named Mr. Sandman. He was known for his magical powers to help children fall asleep. He had a long white beard and wore a tall hat and a long jacket. Mr. Sandman lived in a small cottage at the edge of the forest where he gathered up his magical sand. He was just a tiny little man and he could always squeeze through shutters on a window or a keyhole. That came in very handy in his work. Every evening, as soon as the sun would set, Mr. Sandman would appear and travel all over the world to help children fall asleep. He crept quietly into their rooms and sprinkled a bit of magical sand upon the children's eyes, which would cause them to drift peacefully off to sleep. One evening, Mr. Sandman met a small girl named Sophie. Sophie couldn't sleep. Mr. Sandman sprinkled some of his magical sand upon her eyes, and Sophie fell into a deep sleep. The next morning, when she woke up, she felt better than she had ever felt before. And she felt that way every night that week. She dreamt of beautiful gardens, princesses, rolling ocean waves, weddings, parties, and twinkling stars. That's what Mr. Sandman did for sweet children. As soon as they fell asleep with his magical sand, he would make sure they had the most beautiful dreams. To do this, he would open his enchanted umbrella above their heads and twirl and twirl and twirl and twirl it. Upon the umbrella, there are the most wondrous stories to be seen. And all the while, he describes what you see. Just like the nights when he visited the sweet girl, Sophie. On the first night, it was a Monday. Mr. Sandman transformed Sophie's bedroom into a beautiful flower garden. She saw giant red roses, lovely white flowers, and soft green shrubs where sometimes, flippity-flop, a bunny would appear. It smelled wonderful in her dream. On the second night, a Tuesday, Mr. Sandman magically brought whispering birds, castles, and princesses to Sophie's dreams. The birds chirp, sing, and fly all around her. Castles are standing up on green hills made of white stones with golden towers shining in the distance. On the path where she is walking, 
She steps aside to make way for a golden carriage with white horses. She looks through the window and, oh, there's a real princess waving at her from within, with a gentle smile. She waves back quickly. It's as if she has found herself inside of a real fairy tale. On the third night, a Wednesday, it's raining heavily outside. The drops are pounding on the windows. In Sophie's dreams, Mr. Sandman has caused the water to magically rise up to the windowsill. Together, they step out of her window and directly aboard a small boat. They're sailing on the rough seas, and Sophie can't believe her eyes. Dolphins are jumping out of the waves, and a seagull is singing overhead. On the fourth night, Thursday, Mr. Sandman takes her on a journey. In her dreams, Sophie gets to attend the wedding of two little mice. She shrinks down until she can fit through a small mouse hole. Inside, she experiences the most beautiful wedding ever with little mouse snacks, sweet mouse cakes, and clink, the clinking of glasses full of mouse bubbles. On the fifth night, she gets to participate in a big party for her two favorite dolls. It's their birthday and everyone is invited. There are streamers hanging and there are balloons. They dance the whole night through in her bedroom. All the dolls, the teddy bears, and the other stuffed animals. What a party! On Saturday, the sixth night, Mr. Sandman has something special in store. He says that the whole world needs to be cleaned because it's been a fun week. But things got a bit messy. And tomorrow they will take the day off. They scrub and mop, singing and dancing, until the job is done. The biggest part of the job is polishing all the stars. When they're all done, they sparkle their full brightness upon the heavens. And the world smells fresh once again. Stars don't actually need to be polished, do they? Thinks Sophie as she wakes up. She giggles a little bit, still smiling because of her many nights of wonderful dreams. She thinks back on the flower garden, the princess carriage, the adventure at sea, the mouse wedding, and the doll party. What a wonderful week it had been, all thanks to Mr. Sandman and those marvelous dreams. So sweet, good children get lovely dreams from the enchanted umbrella, says Lou. What about naughty children? Do they also get lovely dreams? Mr. Sandman does something different with naughty children. They drift off to sleep just as peacefully, but they dream of nothing at all. As soon as they fall asleep, he spins his enchanted umbrella around above their heads, but now there aren't any wonderful pictures, and instead it's nothing at all. What do you think of that, Lou? Would you be getting the lovely dreams tonight? Have you been a good boy today? There is silence on the other side of the bedroom. Lulu hears only a soft snork, snork. Lou is lying there, already snoring peacefully. Sweet dreams, dear Lou. <laughs> <laughs>